All right, hey guys. I have now had one week with the G701 VI or G7016 um, results so far. I'm still happy. I'm going to keep the machine very happy. Um, but in this second part of my first review, I want to talk about some thermals and some of the things that I've learned about the machine. Um, I'll throw out a con first, and this is probably a known con within the ASUS community. Speakers in this thing are terrible. I'm not even really sure where they're pointed to, but it seems like they're pointed out of the back of the unit, and sound is just not good. Um, I was able to fix the issue by getting a set of small desktop speakers that probably sound better than any laptop would anyways, but I'm just a little bit irritated that I would even have to do that on something that's supposed to be portable. Why on earth you point the sound out the rear, I have no idea, but that's been my only big con. Um, so when you start the machine, what I found is if you go to the RAW Gaming Center, it's always set to extreme by default. If I go in here and change this, and, and this is all confusing because, you know, for example, it's 3820 or 3808, and I guess this changes under load, but when you go to standard, it's still showing the same CPU frequencies. Um, but no matter what, when you start the machine, it starts up on extreme. So we'll leave that on apply. Um, I'm also not... This raw gaming center is okay. Um, I can't even figure out the GPU perf limiter. I mean, you click on it and nothing happens. Um, I've also messed around with the system fan boost where you get a slider scale here, but no matter what I slide it to, I haven't found that it actually does anything. So my basic thing I do every time I start the computer up is go into here, change it from extreme to standard. That's what I normally do. Um, the CPU still performs excellent and I don't have to worry about extra noise. Um, so, the other thing I was going to show you guys is I'm going to run some, excuse me, I'm going to run um, 3D Mark and just so you can see my core and memory clock, nothing's overclocked, nothing's underclocked. And from our raw gaming center, the CPU is still set on extreme. So basically, if you just fired the computer up and did nothing, this is how it's going to come out of the box. So now we'll go ahead and run the new 3D Mark and see how it goes. Here, the fans are running. I'm not sure how good this microphone is, but this is at a normal load. It's completely tolerable. It's just a little bit more than I would like. I, I'm not saying it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's leaps and bounds better than the Sager slash Clevo. Okay, we finished the first test. Again, this first test was running default, how you turn on the computer and this is what the settings are set to. The CPU is set to extreme, the GPU is not clocked at all, it's just standard, and we get 6,300 points. From that first test running everything at standard, I want to go back through the graph here and show you some temperatures, at least on the GPU side. Um, let's see if we can detach this. There we go. 
Okay. CPU temperature looks like we hit a peak of 91 for a split second there, but generally mid 80s. Uh, back to GPU temperature, we hit a max of 87, and it pretty much stayed at 87. So now we're going to go and run it how I like to run it, which is go back to the raw game center. And, oops, not that one. change this from extreme to standard apply that close out of the gaming center and then I like to take this down around 275 280 somewhere in there just the core clock I don't touch the memory I just down the core clock on and that's just on the GPU so the CPU should no longer be overclocked. It should be running at stock speeds, and the GPU is now underclocked by 270-some points. I'll explain why I do this after the test, but let's run the test again. Again, we got 6,294 on the first run, and now we will run it with the lower clock settings. Okay, so wrapping that up, the GPU stayed at 87. Interesting. C CPU never went over 73, 74, 75, 76. So CPU definite improvement. Um, GPU, there was no advantage whatsoever in lowering the clock speed on the card. Um, from an audible sense, the fans sounded exactly the same. So, even though I downed the core clock on the GPU, temperature stayed the same and we did lose some performance. So, the long and short of this is, is Leave the GPU alone and just turn off the turbo gear. Again, every time you start the machine, it's extreme. Put it down to standard, and that'll keep your CPU way down. I mean, I believe we spiked 91 last time, and this time we never went over 76, which is fantastic. Just for frame of reference here, I did want to show this was our notebook card that we just ran. Let me compare some results here. Okay. 5535 is what we got down clocking the GPU and the CPU. Um, 6411 should relatively stay the same if we leave the GPU alone and put the CPU to standard. In comparison, for just one of the, <laughs> those folks who want to know what the best of the best compares to, um, my other rig, I have a Titan X that I've liquid cooled, and my best score there was 9,105. Um, also, if you want another good comparison, this was the Sager score right here, 6,400. Um, the Sager 6,416 almost matches identically to this machine at 6,411. So 
the thermals are so much better. I don't have to crank the fans. They don't sound like there's a jet engine living in my kitchen. Um, I'm, I'm just a happy camper. A lot of people in the forums are like, oh, the desktop CPU is so much better, blah, blah, blah. And I, I agree, it is better. But at the same token, I'm not seeing, at least on a graphically rendering side of things, any major improvement to going to the desktop CPU. What I did see was significantly higher temperatures, fans running just atrociously, constantly, and now I can play things and not have to listen to the fans. I mean, even running this machine on standard and not touching the GPU, I still get 120 frames per second in Doom. You know, that's 1080 resolution, ultra maxed out settings. 120 frames a second. I mean, I'm totally happy with that. Yeah, the Sager has a 1440p. I mean, it, there's pros and cons, right? But at the end of the day, you know, so many people were saying, well, the Sager, you have to do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, when you're talking about spending $3,000 plus, I want it to work out of the box. Yeah, I'm an enthusiast. I like to tweak things, but I don't want to have to tweak the core of what the machine is to make it playable. And the Asus gave me Asus, whatever you want to call it. You know, it, it made me happy for my money. I mean, your mileage may vary. Some people may want to tweak till their hearts can, you know, I, I get that. But if you just want to spend the money and have an absolutely stout system that doesn't sound like it's going to take off, I'm sorry, but the, the Asus is the way to go, man. I love this machine. So questions, comments, you know, I'm not a fancy video editor. I'm not being paid to do this. I spent my own money. Um, you know, some subscribers would be great or some likes, dislikes, whatever. But, you know, if I continue to do these videos in the future, you know, let me know. What can I do? All right, guys, take it easy. Thanks so much for watching.